Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech Tutor. Today I'm going to talk to you about fan clients. So when you work with software and you're doing it for different uh, industry jobs, you're usually going to end up interacting with another software service and you're going to want to make API calls to another service so that way you can integrate with things outside your organization. So the best way to do this in my opinion is with fan clients. And I'll give you a quick starter project to help you test your fan client as well. Maybe we'll even use that for future projects. So let's go ahead and jump into the code now. All right, so to get started, I created this sample project. I'm kind of thinking that I'll end up using it for more than just this video for future videos. If I need a server to interact with to showcase uh, functionality that we're using, this will be great for that. A lot of these dependencies are pretty standard. I'm pretty sure I've covered all of these in other videos. And I'll try to link to those videos in the description. But if you have any questions, just let me know. So there's a Docker Compose file. This is what I'm using to spin up the Postgres database for this sample project. In this application YAML, configuring the database properties as well as I'm configuring HTTP security. So there'll be basic auth on some APIs to help showcase how Fain can be used to interact with uh, APIs that have security on them. In my sample controller here, I have four different types of APIs. So I have a get, a delete, a put, and a post. And these are all interacting with our repository class using Spring Data. So that way we can retrieve records, delete records, add records, or update them. Additionally, I have my application configuration class for the security. Again, you have to use this enable web security annotation. So that way it'll actually apply and then Basically, all I'm doing is just applying that basic security that I configured in this application YAML to, again, add a basic auth with user and password as the username and password. In here, this is where I was using Flyway to add some records to my database. Again, I covered this in another video already as well. This is using Spring Data to set up your, uh, your repository layer to interact with your database. And then also you end up needing to have an entity class so that way you can add and retrieve records from your database as well. But now that we've covered pretty much everything in this sample project, let's go ahead and jump over to the Fane project and I'll start explaining everything there, how you get set up with a basic Fane client, how it's really easy to use. It's a good abstraction to uh, you know, simplify basic HTTP calls. And it's even more robust than that. You really can do a lot of things with that, but this video is just going to get you started. And then I'll also show you where you can look at the documentation to make additional configurations as needed. All right, so now over here in my Fane project, if you look at the dependencies, you'll notice that I'm using Spring Boot version 2.5.2, and then the Spring Cloud version 2020.0.3. The reason why I'm pointing this out is because in a moment I will show you where you can figure out which Spring Cloud versions are compatible with which Spring Boot versions. This is important. If you pick a version that's not compatible, you will probably have issues. Additionally, I have some of the standard dependencies, Spring Boot Starter, Spring Boot Starter Web. The new one here that I'm using specifically for Fane is Spring Cloud Starter Open Fane. Uh, I like to use Lombok in almost all my projects. It's just easier for getters, setters, all that abstraction. And then you do need something for dependency management when you add Spring Cloud, at least unless you're really wanting to control your dependencies to a finite level. Otherwise, you can just include a Spring Cloud version and it will automatically set the version of your cloud dependencies. And then this is just some additional standard setup here for when I want to build my project. Taking a look at the application YAML, you'll see some basic configurations. So I'm putting all my APIs to have slash API in front. And then I like to disable Hystrix. I also do prefer to use OK, OK HTTP as my client for my fan client. Uh, I'll show you this in the documentation in just a moment. And then also I am setting this, uh, the client URL, the other project, is 9090. The reason why I did that in the sample project, which I forgot to mention earlier, is so that way I can run this project on 8080. So 9090 will just be the, uh, the localhost 
and port number that I'm running on that project at all times just to make it easier because most of the time, unless you configure a different port, it will default to a 80. So now let's go ahead and look at the documentation I was talking about really quickly. So here and the Spring Cloud project documentation here, you will see how they have the release train compatibility. So this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. You can see how this is the version that is compatible with the 2.4 and 2.5 versions of Spring Boot. Otherwise, if you had older versions of Spring Boot, you'd want to use Hoxton and so forth. I will put a link to this in the description so that way you can take a look yourself in case you decide to use other versions of Spring Boot. Over here, here's some documentation about uh, the Fane project portion of Spring. And so in here, there's lots of good information. Again, I'm kind of going to give you a very general project to get you started, but there is a lot of abstraction available via this Fane project and configurations. If you need something very simple, my project will probably be fine. But otherwise, as you can see here, there's so many different settings, so many options. You can configure automatic retries. Uh, you can also have specific error handling. Uh, here you see there's a part about using uh, basic OS uh, request interceptor. And I'm actually going to uh, show you how I configured my fan client to handle the basic OS. You can also configure the timeouts, the log level. I mean, this thing is robust. So I really prefer to use the fan client when I'm uh, interacting with other projects and I need to make HTTP request. So, you know, I hope you also find this to be very useful. And if you have any questions uh, and you need to configure your project a certain way, just let me know. But I hopefully my project is enough to at least get you up and, uh, and started. And if you decide you need more, then hey, you could take a look at this documentation and dig in and, and keep <laughs> customizing your fan client to your needs. All right, so let's go back to the project. All right, so next over here in my Spring Boot application class, you will want to enable fan clients. You could do this here, you could do it in a configuration class, it doesn't really matter, but you do need to do this. If you do not add this annotation, your fan clients will not work. And when you try to wire them into other classes, it's just not going to find them because they're not enabled. So here is my sample fan client right here. So this is what we're going to be using. This is basically how you set up a fan client. Uh, as you can see, you use the fan client annotation. Uh, you can call it whatever you want here. I call mine sample client. And then this part's important. So the URL sample client dot URL, I come back over here, you're seeing where that's where I was setting up the uh, host and port number of my sample project that I'm hitting. So you do want to have a way to match that up. This allows you to uh, add it in dynamically. You could have put it here hard coded, but I would not suggest that. And then you also can optionally add a configuration class, which I'll cover in just a minute. I did that because of some settings that I wanted to add and showcase to you uh, that I think you'll find useful. And then as far as when you want to add the API calls that it's going to make to the other project, it's very similar to how you set up a controller, really. Uh, you know, you set up the API endpoint as well as which type it is, whether it's get, delete, put, or post, the parameters that go to the URL. So, I mean, if you've worked with Spring controllers, it should look really familiar. It's almost intuitive because it, it, it's so similar. And here, you know, everything's abstracted away. You don't have to put the full URL. Uh, the parting, uh, the starting part of your uh, host name and port again is configured in that application YAML, and you're just really putting the end part of the API uh, for each location that you're interacting with, as well as the payload. Again, this is all very similar to uh, your normal controller setup. So, continuing over to that configuration I was talking about, the reason why I added it is because I wanted to be able to handle basic auth. So as you saw in my sample project, I ended up adding my basic auth where the username is just user and the password is password. I would not suggest this, but obviously you can see that what this is doing is for every request that's going over to the other project, this is going to intercept that request and add your user credentials. So this makes it really easy. You don't have to go add your credentials into every single call into your fan client, which you can do, but I find this to be easier because then 
you add it in one spot and it's covered for all of your API calls. Now, if you need to customize it, because let's say that you don't actually have the same type of authentication on every API or whatever your other customizations may be, you can obviously change it out and do things differently. But if you have the same type of authentication on all APIs, this is great. It makes it really easy. Then I also added a controller for this project. So that way I can send requests to this project, which will then get forwarded to the other project. I'm going to showcase this in Postman in just a bit. So I have some really basic APIs, uh, one to get the data from the other project, to um, send a delete request from this project over there, update the data or save new data, which again, forwards to the other uh, server that's running and then saves it to that Postgres database. All right, and then also I utilize this sample request class. I made this class just to help set up my payload that's going to go over to uh, the other server. And I actually had set up sample response, but I forgot to use this. I don't really need to use it because if you look in the sample controller, I actually just simplified it and returned a response entity and started populating that. Uh, but you could always, instead of doing what I did here, have actually used the sample response and then uh, just return that back in your controller. It's up to you. There's lots of different ways to do this, but uh, this is the way I ended up doing it. I just forgot that I created this class. So I never even ended up using it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and run both projects, and then I will showcase how to basically use them and show that they're actually working via Postman. All right, so let's go ahead and click Run on this project, or if you haven't run it before, you can always right-click and then Run from here. All right, so that one is up and running. Now let's go ahead and run the other project. All right, and it's really important that you actually uh, run the Docker Compose. If you don't, obviously this project won't work because it's the one interacting with the database. Uh, again. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to link to those other videos. But obviously, if your database is not running, this will not work. So it's very possible you'll get some sort of error where it's saying your database is not running. So uh, because I skipped those steps, if you have questions, let me know. But otherwise, take a look at my other video if you want to know more about using Docker to run a Postgres database. All right, so now let's go ahead and use Postman to showcase what the project does. So if you hit the Git API in the Fame project, with the first three records, you'll see you have some data, other data, and more data. And what this is pulling from is a sample project. I had used Flyaway to set up the first three records, some data, other data, and more data. So as you can see, working. Next, we will go ahead and add a record as well. So let's just go ahead and add some record with, let's just say, new data. And the ID of that one is 13. So to prove that that got added, let's go ahead and fetch 13. Hey, you see new data, and it was created today. Now, let's go ahead and update a record. So we could update uh, record three, I think is what I add here. So let's go ahead, grab records two, three again. And you'll see some data, other data, more data, and now, We'll update this one and we'll set the value to updated data. And so now when I fetch record three, it should be updated data. There it is. And lastly, uh, if you try to delete records, I believe I had actually set this up ahead of time to showcase that I have some error checking. So that way when you search for something to delete it or fetch it, it actually returns a 404. Uh, this is in my project that way. I'm intentionally covering whether a record is not found or it is found. This is something you customize on your end, how you handle certain results coming back from your FANG client. Uh, so that way, you know, your front end code could properly display to the user what's happening. So obviously there's no record 999, so it's just not going to work. And so then if you go ahead and let's delete record, let's delete record three, the one that we just updated. So returns 200 okay because it found it and deleted it. And then after that, 404 because it's no longer there. 
And then when we try to search for records one, two, and three, as you can see, three is no longer there. So the delete was successful. So this is a very quick introduction into Fane clients and again, how they make HTTP calls very easy, how they abstract out even, you know, adding a security layer to your Fane client to do basic authorization, or again, there's tons of configurations you could set up for automatic retries or other uh, features that Fane has added out there for you. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. If you want to see anything more about Thane, tell me about what you want to know, or if there's any other topics you'd like to cover uh, in these future videos, let me know. And I'll, I will find out, if I don't already, I'll research them and I'll put some videos out for you. Now don't forget to look in the description where I will link both of my GitHub repos for the sample project as well as the Thane project. And please take time to like and subscribe for future content. Thank you for watching.